So, we celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. That was the day he became a Christian, right? Wrong, wrong. Paul never thought he was a Christian. He always thought he was a Jew. He died believing he was a Jew. He died believing that he had found a new way, though, of living out his calling to be a Jew. Peter was the same. It doesn't come until almost the end of the first century that, that when we get kicked out of the synagogues, that we finally start calling ourselves Christian because, you know, they keep telling us we can't be called Jews anymore. No, what they first referred to the, this way of following the law, they called it the way, the way of Jesus. And the question is, when exactly was St. Paul conversion? When did it start? And some would say it was on that day, on the road to Damascus. But I've got to tell you, I don't think that's true either. I think it started a little earlier when Paul, who was called Saul at that point, stood there and watched Stephen die when he was stoned to death because he was following this new way. You know, Stephen died praying, Lord Jesus, receive my soul. And Paul just stood there and watched all that. And you know, as he took it in, I can't help but think that somehow that planted something in his mind that finally came to fruition on that day when Paul was on his way to Damascus. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And that moment would be profound because Paul would learn something very important about how closely Jesus identifies with these people who follow his way. You know, Saul wasn't doing anything to Jesus. At least it didn't seem that way. But Christ so identifies with us that when we hurt one another, we hurt him because we are all part of his body. And that was the great insight that Paul would finally come to, that the body of Christ is alive in this world. And that body, you and I, are a part of that. No, Paul would gain great insight, but he would continue to do that over his lifetime. You know, even if you read the letters of St. Paul, chronologically, that is, in the order they were written, not the order they're in the Bible, you see there's a change in Paul. Remember how this last Sunday we heard how Paul was saying to the Corinthians, you know, this world is passing away, get ready, the end is here. Uh, Paul kind of changed that opinion by the time he moved further in, by the time he did his third missionary trip. He'd come to understand that you know, we just don't know when that's going to happen, and we have to trust the Lord. Paul grew. And so to say, when was Paul converted? I'm going to say over a whole lifetime. He learned more and more about Christ, and he learned to follow him more and more faithfully. And I think that says a lot about you and I. You know, I don't believe in the same God I believed in when I was eight and made my first communion. I don't believe in the same God that I believed in when I was first ordained. Over the years, my understanding of God and my experience of the Lord has changed me. So I view God differently. In my own mind, you know, God is not small at all, but God is really beyond my ability to understand at all. And all I can do is just stand before the mystery of God and be grateful. Grateful that God would open that mystery a little bit to me. You know, and I think that was true of St. Paul. I think that's true of all of us who are called to grow in faith. You know, it's not a single moment. It is a whole lifetime. I think Paul shows that to us. You know, and as he grew through his lifetime, he became even more and more aware of Christ so that by the time he writes his letter to Timothy, he can say, you know, I don't know what to say. 
you know, I want to be with the Lord, but if he wants me to stay here a while longer, I guess that's okay. But I really want to be with the Lord because he had grown to understand Christ so much better as he walked the way of Christ through his life. Now I pray, not just for me, but for all of us, that in our lifetime, we'll grow as well in our understanding, in our faith, and most of all, in our love of the Lord, so that all that he offers can truly be a part of our life. Amen.